Resident Evil is a series beloved for both its gameplay and storytelling, and as someone who has never touched one of these games, I figured it was about time for me to check out the series. And since I'm going to be playing on PC, I may as well download some subtle quality of life mods to enhance my gameplay further. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm going to download some of the worst mods this community has to offer. And I'm not talking about the mountain of mods, no. If you're new around here, strap the hell in, because things are about to get really, really stupid. Quick thanks to everyone supporting the Patreon and Discord. I love you guys. Our story begins with the biggest threat to the American people, a fast food burger made up of 50% grease and 50% fat. That said, I do get hungry for Five Guys every time I see this cutscene. We're then introduced to the average American consumer who, in a fashion very true to life, cannot be fit in frame properly. After some bumper car shenanigans, the story shifts focus to Leon, a police officer whose everyday life is a living nightmare that no mortal man could ever fathom. We make a pit stop at 7-Eleven for a refill on our flaming hot Cheetos and Capri Sun. However, we find the cash are nowhere to be found. Instead of shoplifting like a normal person, we go and look for an employee like a nerd, only to find two former park employees that are evidently not doing so hot since they were fired. Having failed our objective of resupplying on critical resources, another foul creature of the night approaches us, before driving off in a vehicle that doesn't belong to us with a passenger that nobody asked for. So, now that we're stuck in this car together, how's your day? Glad to hear. So, do you speak English or are you just living in the United States without any grasp on that language? Good talk. After the 83rd consecutive drunk driving incident of the night, we fortunately get split up from the freak of nature in our passenger seat. Now we can finally enjoy a pleasant stroll down to the police station in peace. Thank the Lord we did not get caught up in one of those one-sided conversations that you'd have to nod and fake laugh your way through in order to keep your sanity intact. Anyways, we arrive at our place of employment, which really nails the comfy and welcoming vibe that all corporations strive to achieve for their employees. Pay taxes? Like that's ever gonna happen. As a police officer, our duty is to ensure safety of all citizens at all times of day. And after Elvis Presley's tragic death, that includes doing routine checkups on bathroom stalls. We then find an employee in need of assistance, who we attempt to help. Unfortunately, however, it was too late. Damn, fourth workplace fatality of the week. Not too shabby, all things considered. But I mean, he probably won't be needing his wallet anymore. Dude, for it, let go of my leg. If you have a complaint about working conditions, go talk to HR. I just work here, man. Oh. Well, we're up to five then. After being saved by Lieutenant Wazowski, we receive a trade request. That's strange. Let's see what... Yo, is that a factory new M9 fade? Lieutenant Wazowski is a real one for that. Man, that's so cool. Oh, we were doing so well this week too. Idiots, man. Hey, you stop that down there. You know public displays of affection are not allowed in this department. I'm coming down here. Some people never learn. After administering disciplinary actions, we head back to Wazowski for an update. Unfortunately, because of Leon's Discord e-boy status, his lack of deodorant allowed the creature from the gas station to follow our scent to the police station. Before confronting her, we should prepare ourselves with better weaponry, so we head to the weapons locker. On the way there, we stumble into a strange menu that surely wouldn't be altering aspects of gameplay later on. <laughs> Nice. At the weapon locker, we find the strong female, a weapon that will dispense an immense amount of justice towards any wrongdoers in Raccoon City. With this, we were now ready to confront the woman with the strangely shaped head. Why are you following me? I, I refuse to believe that you don't speak English. It's impossible for you to have survived in the city without that basic skill. Knew I should have loaded up on Axe before I clocked in. Oh my. Listen, I'm gonna count to three, and if you don't get down from there, you're gonna be polishing the floors. One, two. Man thought I was joking. I don't play games. After collecting the three MacGuffins that have me stumbling around this map for an hour, yes, I know I'm stupid. I'm currently trying my best to become a games journalist, actually. The stairway downstairs opens, likely a safe haven where that thing can't follow us. Hey, come on, this housekeeper, we gotta get out of here. No, you're too cringe, Leon. Wherever you go, she'll follow you. For the safety of the department, you will need to find work elsewhere. Get out of here. Wazowski, 
This job means everything to me. Get you all bussy out of my sight before I throw it off the roof of this precinct. Now that we're a part of the 3.7%, our new main objective was to find a new place of employment because I am not going to be living in a homeless camp infested with dirty needles and various illegal substances. We head down the elevator in hopes of finding a new job opportunity. Hello? Any employers looking to hire experienced individuals for their company? I have valuable experience in law enforcement. What? Hey, listen, man, I'm in a real tough spot here, so if we could just set up an interview... Oh, hey, nice to meet you. Oh, wow, you got a real firm grip there. So are you guys currently looking for new hires? And what is it with people in the city and not speaking English? Hey, bro, you got a little something on your shirt. Let me help you with that. Hold still, bro, I can't help you with your shirt until you... Yikes. One failed interview under our belt, we needed to press on. We fiddle with some machinery that we are not qualified to operate and emerge from the sewer like a true member of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Unemployed, with several deadly weapons, and abnormal physical traits that would surely put us in a government facility for experimentation that the government promises they would never do. But come on, we all know it's happening. We make an attempt to leave the parking garage when suddenly... Holy sh**, is that the dog from up? Oh, I don't have your endangered bird, he's somewhere else. Who are you? You gotta be f***ing kidding me. What is it with the city and its cultural diversity? The only person that spoke Damn, fluent English crazy. just- Wait, you speak English? I hate this place so much. Where the hell- Oh my god. A normal human being? Do you speak English? Yeah. God fucking damn it, I was so close. Okay, seriously, who are you? And why do you insist on speaking to me in a language I cannot understand? I literally just heard you speak English, so why are you doing this to me? Stop, I need answers, woman. Come on, fanboy. Alright, if you're just gonna insult me, then I prefer you continue speaking in a foreign language. Despite having our appearance openly insulted, we follow her directions because despite how much we want to deny it, we are a p***-ass bottom boy who will listen to whatever order is given to us due to the increased amount of soy and estrogen flowing in our veins. Wow, I have no idea why I wrote that extremely out-of-pocket line in the script. I am sorry. After uncovering several sentient loot boxes that are all for some reason caged in a room that is right next to a morgue, someone tell me the lore reasoning behind this because all I have to go off of is this document written entirely in brain rot English. While pillaging the bodies at the morgue for loot, we find a key on this Teletubby. All the zombies are Teletubbies now, by the way. And dispatch him and his friend on the way out. We also find a car key that is being stored in a lunchbox for some reason. And find an object that makes no sense to me, no matter what angle I look at it from. After returning to our former workplace, we head down the ladder to check for wallet, to check for survivors of the helicopter crash from earlier. Finding nothing but fire at the crash site, we head down the stairs to catch a jump scare before it could happen through sheer game sense and instinct. We put out the fire and finally have access to the helicopter's interior without the risk of third degree burns. All right, let's see what we... Dude, are you for real? An unforeseen ambush by the fast food burger that still makes me hungry despite its attempts to smash me into tomato paste. We continue our journey to find an employer despite this very minuscule speed bump and perform maintenance on the clock tower which has its parts strewn around the police station because it's the apocalypse. After some super immersive electrician gameplay, we get access to a key card for the parking garage and... Is that an audio recorder? I wonder if it even works. What a waste of technology. This day could not get any- Oh, would you just f*** off? We flee to the parking garage where we are suddenly jump scared and manhandled by our inner demons who could not be kept at bay any longer. It's not funny, Kinky. Oh, my god, thank you. Why do you insist on f***ing with me every single time we meet? Is it the ears? I bet it's you. You know, I'm pretty sick and tired of this discrimination. Shut up and open the door, femboy. After being objectified to nothing more than a key card, we head to the gun shop with our new companion, where we find another survivor. Hands up, motherfucker. Well, chill, bro. I'm just out here looking for employment. What, what the hell are you talking about? Y'all, wait, wait, does she speak English or do I need a translator? She does. She just chooses not to for some reason. Oh, okay. Y'all need to hand over your lasagna or any Italian food you have right now. Hey, I really think we ought to listen to him. Have you been on r slash I'm sorry, John? I don't want any of that spilling into reality. Enough talk. 
Hand it over right now. All right, man. I got some Chef Boyardee. Is that enough? Only time will tell. It's Chef Boyardee. Be for Abby Ellie Garfield. No, no, wait, please. I think we should go. After that escapade, we head into the sewers for our romantic dinner date with our partner. Ugh. Hey, come on in. The water's real nice. Oh, I wonder who that could be. After an encounter with Clifford the Big Red Dog of the Sewers, we continue on our date with some cute slice of life small talk in the elevator. So, where are you from? Shut up, fanboy. All right, cool. You know, I'm getting real tired of being constantly degraded. Oh. Well, 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 if it isn't the fanboy, an anime girl, here to plunder this corpse that is rightfully mine. You can have it, dude. I don't want any- You will not take him. Go, my newest creation. Match I found in my pocket in Ador. Oh. How do you like my Glockinator, fanboy? <laughs> well, it seems that my shoulder has been perforated. Do you have any field dressing or something? <laughs> You're seriously fucking with me when there's a hole in my shoulder. Well, I got a funny joke for you. <laughs> with Leon dead as fuck and levitating in midair for some reason, our perspective shifts to Rem, which is this character's name, by the way. Not the actual character from this game, but... You get it. We're given a tutorial on a new mechanic. Yes, I'm playing in game journalist mode. You seriously think I'm going to install a mod that is infinite ammo and not use it? Anyways, the tutorial explanation was so chalked that I had to use the old strategy of uh, push the buttons till they figure it out, partner. Afterwards, we do some serious hacker activities, which ends up putting us in an awkward spot. Look at this dumbass snooping around Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated without permission. <laughs> All right, I'll take those as your last words then. Goodbye. We solved this puzzle, which put a slight amount of stress on my brain. Afterwards, we move into a room where... It seems you have bested my... Senator, I commend you for this. I have no idea what you are even saying. Seriously, maybe you should look into a Rosetta Stone subscription or something. Anyway, bye. Being maimed in the leg, Rem immediately tries the dumbest possible thing in this situation and tries to pull a piece of metal out. She's too weak to pull it out though, and we are treated to a cut to black. I'm alive? Well, this sucks. It's revealed that Leon is actually alive, and we are set on a quest to find Rem. Oh, the zombies are Lego minifigures now, I just thought I'd let you know. Hello? There seems to have been a mistake. I'm still breathing right now. I was supposed to die in the hallway earlier. Is that... Ugh. Do I want to save her? Literally all she's ever done is order me around and degrade me ever since we met. Nah, fuck it. Maybe I could get that spy gadget off her corpse. After a long journey to find all the key items for the next door, it is revealed that my worst nightmare has become a reality. We're forced to do a puzzle with chess pieces, and our only way of figuring out is to read this riddle. Now, as someone who has never even touched a chess piece in their life, this is going to be actually impossible with this text that's been f***ed to hell and back by Google Translate. I could try and figure out this riddle. Another option would be to brute force it, but I think I have a better solution. Using my masterful game sense, we conquer this hurdle that stood in our path. We're then thrust into the never before experienced POV of a stuffed animal in a crane machine before turning the tables and dropping the player of said game into the prize chute below. Afterwards, we gain access to the room that Rem was trapped in and have a touching reunion. You're still alive? I was kind of hoping to pillage your corpse for spare change, but I guess that's fine. Why did you come here? Have you developed brain damage? What? Yeah, not so funny now, is it, dickhead? Unfortunately, we run into an issue where Rem doesn't have enough game sense to phase through the door, so we have to, ugh, go back and actually do the puzzle. After, we head down via cable car and have a touching moment with Rem. So you definitely contracted some kind of illness from being poked by that dirty piece of metal, right? Can I have your, like, hacker thingy, since you'll probably be dead soon? Whoa, I heard something about COVID in there. Are you... Ugh, dude, what the hell? Now I'm gonna have to call in sick. You're unemployed. Oh. Right. Rem stays in the cable car while we venture forward into this underground facility. After some light exploration, we found an individual wanted for theft of a holiday. And since we are no longer a police officer, we no longer have arrest quotas to make. 
So... We then find a console and push a button, because when in a restricted area, pressing random buttons on machinery that is used for who knows what is always going to be the correct answer. The undeniable proof of this advice is presented immediately after in the form of an object that's use is unclear to me at this time. Scaling down a ladder, we land in an area that I swear on my dickin balls you could hear the landmine sound effect from Lethal Company in the background. I'm not going insane, I swear. You know, I could see you up there, dumbass. You're not doing a very good job of jump scaring me. Doesn't seem like a bad place to work. The atmosphere is lighthearted enough for people to play fun. <laughs> After some running in circles, we crack the code for the Nickelodeon slime formula and insert it into this machine. During this process, I had a mini panic attack when I saw all these holes and thought I had to go find the other 14 vials before progressing, which was thankfully not the case. We then gained level three access, meaning that we could now let me just squeeze past you here, bud. Ooh, a cassette tape. How wonderfully modern. I wonder what rich lore this tape holds. Come on, come on, it's nearly complete. Hands up, do it now! No, no, I know who you work for. Drop it and put your hands up. I watched all of the John Wick trilogy in preparation for this moment. Well, that was dumb. Hold on, wait, maybe we can save him. Mikowski, that man has five holes in his chest. He's fucking dead. Didn't know people were burning live leak footage onto cassettes these days. I guess that's something you could do with your time. Now this looks real welcoming. I bet the boss of this establishment is waiting right behind this door to greet me with a firm handshake. Oh. I'm going to take this. I'm sure he's just on break or something. Oh, there he is. Hey, so I've been looking all over for Dude, what the hell? That's my future employer you're shooting with a super soaker. I'm not sure if you've had your eyes checked recently, but that man has a giant cyst-like eyeball growing on his shoulder. Not to mention the fact that it only communicates via physical violence and inhuman growls. Is the police department that desperate for hires that they are willing to accept f***ing Helen Keller onto the force? I just need a job, man. Well, if you're willing to put behind the fact that I've been nothing but suspicious since we've met and also attempted to murder your weird anime girlfriend, I have an whoa, offer whoa, whoa, whoa. for- pause. What'd you just say? What, did you think that no one could see inside that cable car? It's a state-of-the-art government facility. You just walked through a central hub area ripped straight out of the Death Star, for Christ's sake. You seriously didn't think we have security cameras? Perhaps you're meant to be unemployed. <laughs> Hey, sorry to cut in on the action here, but I would just like to point out that Doofenshmirtz being thrown against the wall here actually caused all my displays to cut to black and freeze my PC. Anyways, back to the action. Leon, you must kill this man because I said so. I've been told you're a little pussy bottom boy and listen to whatever anyone tells you to, so consider yourself an intern. Intern? Wow, that's a big step up from being unemployed. You did well, intern. Thanks. So do you think I can maybe, you know? I'll have a lot of time to think about it while I'm dead on the floor. All right, just send me an email. Hmm. Well, I think that went well. Just as my ears were getting used to hearing English. Dude, just speak English. This is getting old. Do you have the vial? How do you know about that? Well, time out. I thought we were chill. Is this some kind of BDSM foreplay? Hand it over. Hey, I killed many men for this vial. I bet I could sell this on Craigslist to pay off a quarter month's rent. Oh, we're back to this now? Disparero. Viene dame estronza. Good God, I can hear you arguing from the afterlife. Right then, back to what I was doing. You are heavier than you look. There's no point, just let go. Okay. After an immense amount of plot development, we're greeted with a 10 minute timer and an elevator down. Heading downwards, we're treated to an intense soundtrack to accompany our brisk jog through this facility. Taking the lift down to the final exit, we must defeat the final enemy of the game, which coincidentally was the first thing that we saw on our journey. Type 2 diabetes. Dodging its attacks are the only way to progress. Just look at those beautifully choreographed attack animations. We then receive a same minute Amazon delivery by a very diligent employee. Speaking of Amazon, check out this Amazon delivery I received the other day. 
Awesome stuff, guys. Using our new weapon, we eviscerate this giant slab of grease and fat into a pile of chunky red goop, just like the Founding Fathers intended, before hitching a ride on a train out of the facility. Well, still unemployed. What a horrible day. Oh, what the f***? What is this? With the story complete, we're then given a grade that takes all of our performance on our run into account. A B. Remember kids, cheating and exploiting your way through life will net you an above average grade. Stay in school, unless you're in college. Peace.